Hi, and welcome to April's editorial video. This month we're covering the vendor selection process and the relevancy of what we consider the traditional RFP. Many question the RFP process is no longer relevant for today's environment. Whilst this might be the case, is there an alternative? Joining me in this video is Jill Bogle from Shiji Group to give us the perspective from a large industry technology supplier. Alan Nelson from Foresight has written the article as well for this month's editorial, so make sure to check that out. And of course, don't forget to listen to the podcast and have a look at the infographic. The we have always done it this way approach and attitude seem to be the case for many, but maybe it's time to reconsider if doing RFPs still really makes sense. Those who have gone through the process would most likely agree that the vendor RFP process is generally long and drawn out. It is time consuming to identify a list of vendors who provide the technology needed, whether it be a PMS, a point of sale, revenue management and guest facing technologies. Once a short list of providers has been determined, preparing the RFP begins, typically defining the hotel's needs and wants. The RFP is then sent to each vendor that's been nominated on a short list to review and respond to. This is then followed by conference calls, then going over the questions within the RFP. The hotel has to then review and work through the responses, identify a list of final vendors, organize and sit through the face-to-face -face or online presentations, and then go through a round or two of final Q&As before coming to their final decision on the preferred vendor. The whole process is time consuming, labor intensive, and really not the most efficient method of identifying the right technology provider and product for a hotel in today's market especially if you are an independent hotel or have a handful of small properties as a regional group. I would argue that the traditional vendor RFP process is becoming less and less relevant in today's fast moving, highly dynamic and increasingly complex industry landscape. Hotels should perhaps question if there are more efficient and relevant ways to address the increasingly important task of technology procurement. With so much at stake, finding the right technology that fits a hotel's operations and goals is really vital to its long term success. The hospitality industry is a people industry. Guests who enter each hotel typically base their experience, for the most part, on the interactions with the hotel and their staff. Yet we're seeing more and more these days that technology is playing a major role in the guest experience as well as staff engagement. The interactions between the hotel, its staff and its guests are crucial to its success. The relationship between the hotel and technology vendor should not be any different. In fact, they are also critical to ongoing success. Let's go now to Jill and hear from her. I, unfortunately, I think the answer is it depends. <laughs> There's not a clear yes or no from my perspective. And the things that I think it depends on, um, I think comes down to complexity and complexity on both the technology side, as well as complexity on the organization side. So if I can explain that a little bit, um, you know, if we're looking at a single hotel or a small group of hotels that's in one geographic region, um, the complexities of their needs, the number of stakeholders impacted by the technology change um, is not as great as an enterprise organization who may be global with multiple regions of the world. They need to support different needs in each region. Um, and many stakeholders, which could be impacted by what the where, you know, how the technology touches their you know, day in and day out lives in each of those functional areas. Um, the second piece, I think it depends on is the complexity of the technology. And I say that um, when I think about our Shiji suite of solutions, um, a solution such as ReviewPro's reputation management, while it's extremely robust and has tremendous amount of capabilities to serve that need, um, the complexities there are not the same when it comes to, for example, maybe a project or a technology that's being considered that includes payments across the globe, where payment requirements differ depending on whether you're in Asia or US or Europe. So I really feel like it depends because of those two reasons, and it should be part of the evaluation process as to whether or not one's needed based on those factors. Uh, 
Um, well, I think, first of all, it may not be answering tools, but it's really important that in today's world with so many technology choices and so much newer technology that's been built on newer platforms, true native cloud, um, that if they're going through this process, they really try to reimagine what they want their entire ecosystem to look like and where this technology fits in um, and reimagine their processes and the, the, the pains that they're trying to solve for. So, you know, we often see, you know, technology, RFPs or questions that come our way that are really just trying to say, you know, does this technology do exactly what we're doing today? And if that's the purpose of the change, it's probably not serving a good use um, and making the process very efficient. Because if you're changing the technology, you should be looking to think about what do I need today as well as for the future. Um, one of the other options, or if we're not going to go through an RFP process, is ensuring that um, the key stakeholders who are impacted are a part of the discussion um, and the interactions with the vendor community um, from the beginning and that they are all, you know, ensuring that their key key items for, you know, what they're looking to solve for are addressed. The other is ensuring that in that process, the deal breakers are really decided upon at the beginning of the process. and agreeing with those deal breakers are and being very transparent with the vendors that you know you're in conversation with to be very clear that these are the you know key things that have to be there or we shouldn't even proceed with the discussion to make sure that the discussion process is a lot quicker and you know there's no surprises at the end um, and then when it i don't know you know we've seen some um, options where instead of going through a full RFP, what can be successful or, you know, briefer um, documents that address the key functionalities and, and needs of the project, um, which can be a lot shorter and more concise, um, really focusing more on the differentiators versus the functionality that a system should have. So, you know, if you're looking at a PMS as an example, every PMS can check guest in and check guest out. But what are the things that we're looking to solve for and really focusing on that in the questions that are provided um, throughout that process of exploring what technology options are out there. Um, and then lastly, I think I'd say that, you know, I think today why some of these smaller groups, single hotels, you know, these smaller, less complex scope projects could get away without an RFP is that the information that's available on the internet, on customer websites is a lot more transparent than it used to be. So there's a lot of things that can be done if there's a good due diligence process in advance to really go through um, what technology is available on their own, as well as with vendors and conversations. I'll start with um, how the technology is built. I think it's the obvious is, you know, do they have the functionality and the integrations that I need? But when it comes to, you know, how is the technology architectured? Is, is the technology, old technology that's been retrofitted to um, be cloud? Or is it technology that um, was retrofitted to make sure that my data is secure and compliant? Um, or has that technology really been built with all of those things in mind to future-proof and to make sure that it's not just ready for the need today, but for what's coming that we don't even know about. Um, another piece of how is it architectured is to understand, especially if it's a more complex piece of technology, is it built in an environment where there's event-driven architecture and microservices um, that would provide more dependability and higher performance levels for the product? So um, to sum that up, you know, the answer, the first thing is, you know, how, how is the technology built? And the second piece of that is, is the technology built in-house or is it outsourced and, or is it a combination of both? Um, next, I would say really important is the vendor's culture or approach to cooperation within the industry and being a good partner to the hotel and hotel community. Um, because the reality is the technologies in most cases have to integrate with other technologies. And the last thing our hotel community and our hoteliers need today is to enter into an agreement with a partner and then find out later that one of the other technologies they've chosen is going to be a challenge. They're not going to want to work with that company because maybe they compete on other products and it's going to make that life difficult really not for the, the vendors, but more for the hotelier who's made that choice. So making sure that there's understanding that 
if I'm going to choose you as my partner, are you going to be cooperative um, to get the project off the ground and to you know, work with other vendors in cooperation? Should we need to add something at a later date or should we need to troubleshoot some challenge that arises? And then I think the next place I would go is on uh, maybe the people aspect of what happens after you know a decision's made. So everything from what does the implementation process look like? Um, where is that team that's going to be implementing? Um, in most cases, implementations are remote. There are some technologies like a point of sale where people actually go on site. Um, what is the level of involvement from my side for implementation from the vendor side? And then once that piece is done, what's that handoff process? Is there you know, a good smooth transition between implementations and support versus just throwing them over to the, to the support line? Um, second would be on the support side and everything from, you know, again, depending on your single hotel or a global organization, where are the support teams located? What are their hours of operation? Do they have the languages we need? Do they have multiple ways for us to engage with them in support? Is there an online portal for putting in ticket requests? Can I actually call somebody and get a live person around the clock if that's the type of technology I'm putting in? Um, is there email support? So having multiple options for support. Um, and then carrying it further from there, depending again on the type of technology would be is there any type of account management support and what does that look like and is it going to meet the needs of what i have for this solution whether there be you know ongoing consulting engagements to ensure optimization of the technology business reviews etc to ensure that there is a little more um, hand holding if you will or wrapping their arms around that that customer to ensure that optimization of the technology is in place In the hyper-competitive and ever-demanding world of modern hospitality, especially during uncertain times like these, hotels don't merely need a vendor, they need a partner. And while price and functionality will always play an integral role in procurement decisions, there are some considerations that hotels might want to look at as a guide through the path of technology procurement. Don't underestimate the importance of industry expertise. Let's face it, hotel operations are complicated, so why should the support offered to hotels by technology vendors subscribe to a format that ultimately doesn't effectively serve the hotel service model? So during your vetting process, consider the following questions. Where are the support and service representatives located? Do they work in conflicting time zones which might lead to delayed responses? Are your daily contacts hospitality industry experts or simply generalists within tech support? Are there any language barriers? Will you have access to a dedicated account manager when you really need that connection and support? And do they understand your business? A great technology partner should have the breadth and knowledge and experience to understand and support your business end to end. They should be able to help you maximize your investment and ensure that you receive the best value from your solution well into the future. Technology isn't meant only to address current needs, rather it ensures the hotel is well positioned for the future if chosen wisely. The hospitality industry constantly needs to pivot, evolve and adapt to emerging trends and demands. Hotels rely on the technology that allows them to be responsive and agile within their approach. Plus there should always be room for change and growth. So when it comes to considering new technologies, rather than go through the long-winded RFP process, perhaps consider a more alternative approach and base your selection on the following criteria. How scalable are the solutions you're interested in? Will they contribute to the growth of your hotel over time? What is the future vision of the vendor for both their product and the hospitality industry at large? Does the product offer easy integrations for cross-platform functionality as your hotel grows its technology stack? Does the platform offer flexible packages and services options? Does the vendor offer more than one solution and platform? 
Is exceptional customer service a key part of their internal company culture? In closing, hotels should look to identify partners who offer genuine commitment to their success and in turn empower the hotel staff to do their best work while keeping the guests' needs and expectations as a priority for their business. Implementing new technologies doesn't end with just the procurement. It's the start of a long-term relationship between the hotel and the vendor. A people first service approach can predetermine a given solution's success within a property and subsequently stands to impact the hotel's success well into the future. Thanks for watching and as always, thank you for your support. We really do appreciate it. Until next time, it's bye for now.